Welcome to the Evangelistic House of God podcast. 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 Unscripted discussions on social issues from a Christian's perspective. Hello and welcome to the Evangelistic House of God podcast. I am Pastor Rod Harris. I am joined by Esther Smith right here. Hey everybody. And Pastor Steve Harris. And we welcome you to our podcast today. We thank you for joining us and watching and subscribing to us. We keep hitting that like button. We keep passing our uh, our, our link around. Share us so people will know where to yeah. find us. Share. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah, share. <laughs> yeah, share. Share. Yeah, share some of your money. Well, we can always share yours. Let's focus on what we got here right now. Let's deal with this. So what's going on with you? Everything is great. Oh, okay. Let me tell y'all. Okay. <laughs> so... My husband got on my nerves so bad. Uh-oh. Oh, <laughs> let, me, let me get a little coffee. Wait, y'all don't let me drink coffee on this. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, he comes home. I'm like, hey, babe, I'm in a good mood. He's in a good mood. Okay. And I'm ready to relax mm-hmm. and wind down with him, okay? Okay. So, I'm already in the wind down mode. He comes, he winding down in the bathroom by himself. Okay. So, I'm like... Okay, people have to use the bathroom, whatever. So then he comes out. He says, hey, babe, could you make me a lunch? I said, sure. I go downstairs. I make him a lunch. I come back upstairs to wind down. He got, he turned over talking about, could you shut off the light? So I got attitude because it's like. Wait, wait he's wait. in the bed now? Yeah, he's in the bed. Okay, so he moved from the, from the bathroom to the bed. Well, he, yeah, he, he came downstairs and saw me making a lunch. He was basically congratulating me on a good job. (laughs) (laughs) And then he got, you know, he got him something to drink. He went upstairs. So I'm like, cool. We're going to go upstairs. We're going to wind down. We're going to talk a little bit. And then we're going to both fade off, you know, to sleep. So I'm down there. I'm like, let me hurry up. I'm hurrying up. I make the lunch. I go upstairs. He over there. And this is how he sleeps for real. His hands like this. Okay. Oh, hit the light, babe. I'm like. Well, okay, so did he come from work? Yes. And he worked those 12-hour 12 12 hour days. 12-hour shifts? <sighs> yes. Honey, child, you know you got you a good man. I know. You got I you did. a good working man. Okay, listen. A strong I, man. Here we go. I'm confused <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> okay, listen. This is, the, this is where my part is this. Is that I wanted to wind down with him, but he wind down by himself. And so now I got to come upstairs and be forced to go to sleep right now. You and know so, what? I'm going to just put this out here. Because he might have wanted you to ride to work with him <laughs> at four in the morning. <laughs> yeah, so but he didn't have to talk to. But that I don't think that was going to happen. No. Look, <laughs> y'all, y'all looking at it from a man. Well, the thing is, is too, <laughs> I'm looking at it from a no, woman's perspective. I'm, I'm looking at it. He worked all day. He's tired. Right? I he, know. His intention was to chill with you. Right? But when you, then he had that hot water hit his body. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm going to tell you. As soon as you get out, then you fed him. Right? Right. Hey, right. what do you want this guy to do? He not made out of steel. All right, so wait a minute. Let me you ask know? this question. He's tired. Is this a normal thing for him? Does he do this five nights a week? What? Go, go to sleep? Yeah, just go to sleep on you. Just Do he make pillows with his fingers like this? <laughs> he make pillows but, with his fingers But I'm just saying, time. when you expect him to wind but, down, does he do that on you all the time? So not all the time, but it, it happens more than I would like, but not all the time. Have you talked to him about it? Have you got his perspective? No, okay, so listen, this is the thing. Mm. On this on this particular time, okay, so, okay, he was tired. <laughs> no, okay, you said listen. on this particular time, you had an attitude. I did have an attitude. I'm not going to lie about it because, it's, you know, I kind of tell the truth. Right. But I had an attitude. I went downstairs. I was like, whatever, I'm watching Pride and Prejudice by myself. I'm going to wind down with me. Okay, Again. Mind. Again. Again. That's another topic. Again. We'll talk but, about Pride and Prejudice another day. <laughs> but anyway, I can watch that every day. But, okay, so I did. But... This is the thing with him. Sometimes what he aggravates me about is that when he's ready to, when he's ready to go to sleep, even if he's not working, even when he's not working, his body mm-hmm. is broken. he be like, Doo-doo. that means it's time for us to go to sleep. It's like, no, I, I'm a person too. Why do I have to go every time you say? Well, that sounds like you need to talk to him. And it don't sound yeah. like you have talked to him. I don't think I that, have it. I don't think that conversation ever took place. Yeah. You know, this is a fitting conversation about the institution of marriage. Yeah. <laughs> and how the institution of marriage is seen to be failing. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? I, I'm going to just, I'm going to put out a, a, a prediction right now. Because okay, go ahead. It, this is one of my conspiracies again. Because I'm going to tell you that 
marriages succeed and marriages fail based on one common denominator, and that is communication. That's true. Always. I agree. The right amount of communication can make or break a marriage. That's, That's right. true. That's right. With the marriage, the institution of marriage failing so fast, I got some stats I'll go through in a minute after I get y'all to kind of start talking about it a little bit. Okay. But fewer and fewer people are actually joining the institution of marriage. Um, mm -hmm. These the, the, the younger generations are getting to the point where they don't believe in marriage. Mm -hmm. They are um, they are running from it. <clears throat> they are playing house. Yep. And if you talk to them about marriage, they're like, well, that's my girlfriend for 17, 19 years. It's, it's like, no. we got five kids. Why, why have you not married this person? Exactly. And what are you doing waiting on him and being his girlfriend for 9, 17, 17 years, years with five or six kids? No way. You know, let's talk about that a little bit. Why do you think it is that a marriage is failing, that America is failing in marriages? I think that there is a, uh, <clears throat> I think people have a commitment issue nowadays. They don't want to commit. And, and it's not just marriage. We talked about these uh, the millennial uh, people. Um, <laughs> And I use them for an example, but it's not just them, it's the older people too. They don't want to commit to marriage, but then you also, they don't want to commit to buying a car, they don't want to commit to a job, they don't want to commit to getting their own home. You know, they would rather live and siphon off the parent or yeah. the parents. <laughs> I also think that there is a, um, a role model issue as well, because there's not a lot you know, most most of the families that I know where the children come from broken homes. Yeah. They only have a mother most of the times that they live with. The father either is divorced or he is, his whereabouts are unknown <laughs> or he's in jail or he's not around or he, you know, moved on, whatever. Or they see him every other weekend or something to that nature. And it just not, it doesn't promote a family atmosphere inside the house and especially as they grow up through their formative years they don't have anybody to look at to say wow i want to be just like mom and dad i want to have that same type of life they're grown up understanding that hey mom did it all by herself dad is doing it all by himself yeah. And so it does something yeah, inside do the that. mind. Yeah. I don't want to do that to me or my children. Or yeah. Somebody through it, well, they just see that it, it's, it's an option that doesn't seem to be realistic to them because most of them don't even know anybody that is married. Now, just real quick. I did, when my kid was really young, she asked me to go with her to school and help her do, make some kind of little thing for Valentine's Day. And the fathers were asked to come in. Okay. I was the only father out of all 45 children wow. that was in that in that class. And it was really sad because the other kids all wanted to work with me because it was like, you know, a real man. Uh, uh, yeah, right. dad actually, actually showed up. The teachers was like, wow, this is this is weird. You know, it's a, a dad here. They were so happy and enthusiastic. And then I some of the dad. kids <laughs> was like, oh, I, I don't even know my dad. I have never even met my dad or... My mom told me that my dad was a piece of crap or whatever, wow. but they didn't have that in them. So you think about just that little snapshot of those kids. How many of those kids do you think will grow up with the mindset that I want to be married and have a family that stays together for the rest of my life? Yeah, but you know, and I hear what you're saying, yeah. but I'm going to just tell you from where I'm sitting, it would seem like. Those be, you, those will be the ones exactly. that would want a, a family relationship. That right. That would want to, you know, you would think yep. that you would say, well, I grew up without a father, so I'm going to make sure that I'm always there for my children. Right. Or I grew up without a mother and a father in a home, and so I'm going to always make sure that I am married and happily in a marriage uh, so that my children will have that as a, an example. Yeah. I, I, okay. Sorry. I, I, I get that. But the thing is, they don't know what that looks like. That's all I'm saying. I get it. On a day to day, they can watch the all, Everybody want to be rich, but they people don't know Not how to be rich. Sure. So it's a dream, you know. It's, it might be a dream. It's like, oh yeah, that looks good, but do you really feel? Do I really feel like it's attainable for me when I don't know anybody that's like that? Well, I have two things that I think. So I agree. I'm 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 with you. I'm wondering like if that's what you didn't have and you missed it seemed like you would go for it but also that's just like the people who watch their fathers beat their mothers and then they grow up and beat their wife yeah you know what yeah. i'm saying because sometimes that's a generational curse that Absolutely. we have to pray off also i think that the reason why people don't want to get married along with what you said is mm -hmm. that it's so 
um, accepted to fornicate and yeah. to shack up and to so why should I marry him? We already together. We know we together. Right. Why should? And what's the difference? And what's the difference? Mm -hmm. And that's how they feel because it's just accepted for you to be to be out there living like you want to live. See, before back in the day, it was like. That ain't your man. That ain't your husband. Right. Is that your husband though? And and it was a more you know unaccepted. So people got married and people right. did the right thing. But now it's like, yeah, this is my boyfriend of fifty years, like you said, right. <laughs> and but, it's just okay. But you also find that many of those people have also never been to church, just like we talked about in, a, in yep. another podcast. Yeah. They don't go to church. They don't have an understanding of how things should be other than what they've seen on television or right. something like that. And then you're trying to build something, a uh, relationship off of that. Also, I've also noticed that a lot of these uh, relationships where the people have been together for years and years as boyfriend and girlfriend, a lot of times when they enter into marriage, it doesn't work yep. because the relationship was not built. The foundation was not right. built on a marriage. It was built on being a girlfriend and boyfriend. And so even though it's to, to us, to you know, it may seem like, well, what's the difference? You're just putting a ring on it and then your life goes on. But there is a fundamental change that takes place that I don't think that people are ready for. Well, it's that one, the two words, holy matrimony. Yes. <laughs> and when it becomes holy, it becomes a wholly different thing. Yep. I'm going to get back to that because oh, I first yeah. want to read the stats to you. Yeah. Okay. 44% of 18 to 29 year old Americans believe that marriage has become obsolete. That's 44, that's almost half of Americans. Wow. In 1960, 72% of Americans adults were married. In 2011, 51%. Wow. And the trend continues to diminish. To drop. Yeah. The number of married adults will become a national minority in the next few years. Hmm. So the expectations by the year 2020, marriage will be beyond, the number of married adults or people entering into marriage will be less than 35%, which will make it a minority institution in America, which or at 44% is already It's already, it already, already is. already is, right. Um, so when we think about the statistics and how people are looking at marriage. What is that needs to change for people to see marriage in a different light? What is that we think needs to change for people to start respecting the institution of marriage like they did in the 60s, like they did when you and I got married 20, 25 years ago, whatever that is. You said 17 years for you? Yep. Yeah, and 21, almost 22 years for me. And I know you're newlywed now, but you had a 20 year marriage or so before that. Right. Yep. You know, and the proof that you still believe in the institution of marriage is that you did it again. Exactly. Right? Because they no living outside of, you know, the will of That's God. True. That just don't make sense to us. True. So let's talk about that. How do we change that mindset? I mean, what needs to happen in society for people to see marriage as something that is uh, desired and valuable to enter into? I think that uh, we need to go back and do a reversal of what we talked about earlier is that there's so many single uh, kids come, growing up in single family homes I think the reversal of that is to have people uh, who are married, a man that actually stay with their with their wives, or married a woman that they had children with, and it gives. I think it's it's a fundamental change that starts at home that gives a child an opportunity to see uh, how a marriage works in real time. Yeah. I think that those are things that that's one thing. I think the other thing is that marriage, like you talked about, is a holy matrimony and it's an institution that is built around the foundation of the church yes right. and, the, and the rules and, and the, uh, the the things that God has put in place for a man and a woman to do it was uh, he, he wanted uh, Adam to be with the woman he gave him Eve and that was a, not just to have her as a companion but to have as his wife right. to marry to uh, to come up and that that is the legal way that God wants a man and a woman to be in a relationship together in. Yes. I think um, as you start to get into it, and we'll get into it, these are wicked times. And as you start to see that the word of God is being watered down and people are not going to church and they're getting further and further from the word of God and the will of God and even understanding what that's all about, they're now just going into what is acceptable by social standards. You yes. know, what what man wants to do and what people feel is more convenient 
And so, you know, I, I think that that's just a big part of it. I, you know, I don't want You brought out a real good point when you said convenience. Yes. People are really focused on being convenient. Yeah. Yes. What is convenient for me today? What yep. do I want to do right now? They never think about the sacrifice it takes to make anything really work. Yeah. Yep. And even people jump into marriage, they jump in because they were in love when they was 12 and now they're 24 yeah. and it's not convenient anymore. Yeah. Yep. You know, the expectations have started to change. People have started to grow up. They're starting to think differently. And they don't understand that it takes work for a marriage to be successful. Yeah, there's a there's a real fear also that that people have about marriage. They're afraid. They are scared to death yeah. of being married. Then you talk to people. You know, we talk to young people. Hey, you know, you need to you, instead of you just seeing this person, you need to get married. And and well, you know, I was thinking about getting married when you know this, yeah. right, after I, I get I, all my stuff. I got to right. get. <laughs> I want to get a house for us, and I want to make sure I got a, a job that will provide for two, and I want to make sure that, you know, I got all of this stuff, all of this his and her stuff. And right. when I get all of that stuff together, then, then I'll, I'll get, get married. married. Right. And the same thing when it comes to having a kid. Yep. I'm going to have all of this stuff, and I, I got to get all of this stuff together. But that's not what marriage is all about. It's about no. two people coming together. And if it struggles, then you struggle together. Yes. You grow together. You, yes. You know, she has your back. You have her back. You supporting yes. each other, and you going through it together. And that's what builds up that, you know, that, that uh, the relationship. And understanding, hey, remember when we did Remember right. how we overcame. Exactly. Remember, you know, and, and, and especially when you have that with God in, in the center of, of, the, of the relationship, that's, that's when a marriage is a really wonderful and a beautiful thing. I think people are afraid of marriage too, but I think people are afraid of divorce more than the marriage. And because I, I read, I don't even, it's been some time now, but I read some type of uh, stat that, Divorce is like um, one of the most grieved things. It's like even yeah. over lose yeah. the death of a child. Mm -hmm. It's more grieved than it's the painful. death of a child. Yeah, more painful. And I said, wow, you know, people don't want to fail at it. So then they just want to tempt it. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Well, and I, I think that that's that. A, I was under the impression that that's what we were talking about, that marriage as a whole, as an institution. But go ahead. Right. Listen. And I think that um, it's, it's, it's the how this... this this new lifestyle is for these people. Mm -hmm. It's a coward's way out. They, they are, they're, they're cowards. You know, it's like, well, I'm not going to try that because I might fail at it. I'm not going to make a decision here because I might try to choose the wrong decision. I might. So it's just this whole mindset of just laziness and, yeah, and cowardice. They work for success. Exactly. And there's so, also a selfishness too. Oh yeah, well. Well, exactly. It's definitely a selfishness. So, you know, we think about the institution of marriage failing and people being afraid to get married for whatever reason they're doing it. There's also another component in it. And I'm going to talk about um, kind of an offshoot is society as a whole, the population diminishing, right? So as people don't get married, you know, they're not stopping having kids by any means, but it's not the <laughs> no. way it used to be. Right. Yeah. Right. So people aren't having children that they, the way they used to be today, a legal spouse can be one of the same sex, which means, that ain't you no know, children being born out of that relationship. None. Right. right? And mm -hmm. so now you got, you know, um, homosexuals who are engaging in marriage. You got mm -hmm. families, people that should be engaged in marriage, which who will not. Right. right. Then what does that mean for the American family? And I shouldn't say American. I'm totally in America. But what does that mean for families? Does that mean that the idea of a family with a, a mother and a father, whether they're the home with you or not, is, is going to actually vanish from us? Wow. It's a, it's a possibility that if that continues, but I, I just look at it as a trick of the devil. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you got these, uh, you know, we talked to, once again about, um, you know, God had intended man to be with a woman in, in holy matrimony and having children in that way. And people have gone so far away from the church and the institution of marriage that they just making the rules up as they go yep. along. Yep. And, you know, this is just things that the Bible it. has talked about. These are the perilous times. This is wicked times where people have just gone about doing things that they wanted to do. And they have allowed their flesh to just overtake and oversee everything that's going on. And so what you're seeing now is a result of when man allows his flesh to take to over. To take over. Yeah. You have broken homes and you have children being raised by 
homosexual families who don't have, and they say, oh, that has no effect on of whether or not does. he marries a, a, a woman or a man. But I, how can you, we just talked about the effect that it has just on, on a, a, a person getting married, whether they in a single uh, family environment. Right, right. Married. So of course, of course it, it has a, a tremendous effect. Yes, on it that. does. Exactly. But you know, I, I just think that it's a sign of the times. I think that we have to continue to pray. We have to continue to keep God first. And I think that we need to keep holding up that banner. Yes. That, uh, you know, hey, this is the way that things are supposed to be. I think we need to teach our kids. I think we need to continue to encourage people to go to church. I think we need to encourage people to be married. Uh, you know, I think that uh, uh, another issue with our with our people is that men, the men, they love to make babies, but don't nobody want to stay at home and take yeah. care of them. Yeah. Yes. And so then they have a string of children all over the place, and then they don't, the man is never there. Right, and then he complains and make about the system and say, "Us, cause I got this, I got FOC in my pocket, or what is it? Is right it friend of the court? court? Yeah. yeah." And it's like, "Well, stop having all of these kids all over the place so that you can actually have some money so that you can, you know, be there for your family." Those are generational curses. It is. It's it's terrible. And, and their fathers did it, and, and their father did yeah. it. And it just continues to just cycle and it's because back. and it's because of the lack of God in everyone's Absolutely. lives. Absolutely, so, you know, it's not everybody that does not want to be married. And I've no. talked to and I see women, especially they really women really kind of cling more to the the whole uh, idea of marriage. Of marriage. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't know if it's because of the princess uh, syndrome where they feel like they have their day in their gown and it's all about them, or mm -hmm. if they really believe in the fantasy of love and and the idea of of marriage. But the scripture says, when a man findeth a wife, he findeth a good thing. That's yes. right. And it never said that a woman can't find a husband. It just said that when a man findeth a wife, uh, mm -hmm. findeth a wife. What do you guys think about it from a woman's perspective, pursuing a man for marriage? I mean, if, if you're a woman and you're single and you see this nice looking guy, is it okay for you to, to step to him? <laughs> no, absolutely not. I'm... At, I'm, for me, I'm I'm old school, okay. And when I take the scripture at its word, it didn't say nothing about a woman, so it's nothing for a woman to do off that part. And that's how I take it. Mm -hmm. It's it's not up to me to find my husband and to find my man and to find my own thing. It's up to God. And if I trust God and if I'm doing what God say, He will send me someone like he did send me because I did trust him and mm -hmm. I and I give him my my trust in my life all the time I think that the problem that one of the problems is that too many women are looking for their man they are searching and finding and hey you look good Keisha and put it in your pocket <laughs> no that's not that's a turn off to if I was a man that would be a turn off to me because it is the man's job to pursue, yeah. not the woman's job to pursue. Is it is a it's in a man's nature mm -hmm. to go after and find a wife. That's why it's in the Bible. It's you you want to say, well, it didn't say you can't find your husband, but it didn't say you should either. Right. So Understood. you know, I, I think that I think <laughs> so, that that's that's another thing that's corrupt in the system. So what say you, Pastor Steve? Uh, well, you know, I look at it um, as a man. Uh, and women, when I was a single guy, I was married once and then I was single for about three years, right? And uh, it, even before I got married the first time, when women would approach me, it was a very uncomfortable feeling. Because, and, 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 and I get it, all, all men may not feel that way, but I, like, like you said, Esther, I'm old school. I, yeah. I was raised a certain way. I was raised to... Um, be the pursuer. I wanted to make sure that I found a wife. I, it just seemed so out of place and, and for me, desperate yes. for yeah. a woman to come and talk to me and be the pursuer and to be the aggressor. And I, I think it also sets a, a bad tone for the relationship too, because uh, once she becomes the aggressor and the pursuer, then what is to stop her who who when when does she then turn the reins over, over to you to to the man exactly. right and so then the man is fighting her to see who's gonna wear the pants in the house and <laughs> right. who gonna do this and I, I'm saying it is a real 
problem yeah. Yeah. with uh, marriage. And we have to counsel people that, you know, where the men have allowed the woman to just pick them up, to club them over the head, <laughs> pick them up, and you mine, and I'm going to take you. And then later in, in the relationship, they're trying to, hey, how can I get these reins back? Uh, right. This woman has been ruling, and, and it's like now she's gotten in. I mean, it's, that's how and the not relationship only that started. Part of it from the man's perspective, but then the woman is mad because her man ain't the man that he ought to be. Exactly. <laughs> right. And I'm well, sick of this cat because he won't take out the trash. He right. won't pay the bills. He exactly. Won't do, uh, but you, you trained him. You've been doing all of this. Right. Yeah, you absolutely. trained him to be the housewife. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I just think that, you know, people really need to think about that when. When I was, uh, okay, so then it was like, I, I went through a period of time where I was single, and I love being single, right? right? It was nice. It was a nice change. But then it was like, you know, it would be nice to be married. But at the same time, I am not running around trying to find a wife either. Yeah. Because I, as a saved man, okay, I can't tell you what the world is going to do. As a saved man, I know that me finding something can't hold a candle to what God to what when yeah. God will find That's what right. He will find for me in the right time. Yes, yes Lord. right. So when when I wait and I waited for my wife and she is a wonderful person, I would not have picked that. Right. right. I wouldn't have been able to find somebody that was tailor made for me at right at that time when it when everything was supposed to be. Right. But God knows, and my trust in Him is so that I'm willing to just sit, sit back and just relax, enjoy my life, and let God bring that about when he's ready. The other key is stop worrying about it. Yes. Yeah. You know, living your life scared. Oh, is it today? I'm so lonely. Oh, my. Oh, I'm so lonely. I'm a, but, do something you with know, yourself. It's a lot of people that don't have that kind of patience. Yeah. Right? Um. Some people are even older than what we're talking about. Some people mm -hmm. are in their late 40s and 50s. They're thinking this thing won't ever happen for them. And they're wondering, you know, how do I force this to happen? Or how can I make this happen? How can I be susceptible to this? And I think that one thing, and I don't know, we got to hold a lot of time to dig into it right mm -hmm. now. But, you know, there's a, a preparation inside of each of us that we need to be ready for a mate. So yes. just because you want to be married or you want a husband or a wife doesn't necessarily mean that you are ready, ready for that. Yeah. And I think that those things come when that strength from within is built up. When you have your foundation in God, when you know who you are, when you yeah. understand your self-worth. Right when you at that point of comfort that you were talking about really yes. is saying that when you were single for those three years, it wasn't hard for you because you were comfortable with being Steve. Yeah, you were yeah, comfortable absolutely. with just being Pastor Steve father of these little girls and brother and son to these people. I mean, right. you were just comfortable with you. And so when marriage presented itself or a woman, you know, was there for you when you found her, it made it an easier transition for you. Right. And I think a lot of times people are trying to force something that they're not necessarily ready for. Right? I agree. But it, it was also just building a life to be single. Yeah. I think that that had a lot to do with it as well because I, what are those things that is going to bring me pleasure? What's, yes. going, what's those things that's going to be fun for me within the construct of my life? Right. Well, a lot of people get married because they think it's going to bring them happiness. happiness yep. And we understand that if you're not happy before you find a mate, you're, you're not definitely not going to be happy no. with them. And it's not their job to make you happy. No, no because then they're going to be gone. Because that's not, they're not there right. to. It's too much to, pressure. It is. To it's entertain you once right. again. He's not there for that. Yes. Yeah. Or she's not there. She, you know, she's there to help you, not, not to be your mother. When it comes to women looking for men, and I hadn't spoken on this, I asked a question. But um, I think the most important thing for a woman to do is to always become, be, a, be a lady. Yes. To always be ladylike. Treat people like how you want to be treated and be open to the idea. So if I was a single woman and a man approached me, it's getting beyond the, the, the physical things I could see with my eyes. Yeah. And being open to the, po I mean, don't get me wrong, I ain't saying break down all your uh, standards and just take any bum off the street. <laughs> what I'm saying is that people sometimes miss their blessing because they're not looking for it with the right focus. Yeah. And so they tend to lose focus on what they should be focused on. And they're looking at the outer appearance. What kind of shoes do we have on? Right. What kind of cars are driving? 
You know, and you're looking at that kind of stuff when if you'd have waited on God to choose it for you, he'd have chosen a man after his own heart and, exactly. and, and blessed you with a real husband or, or same thing for a wife. Man, this is a good conversation, but we gotta go. Yeah. We are at our time, folks. Thank you for thank you for joining us, for listening in and watching us. You can always find us at ehogministries.com. We are on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. We are anywhere you want to find us. Thanks again for watching us. Don't forget to subscribe, hit those like buttons, and we'll talk to you later. Have a blessed day.